Okay, so I'm going to fully nerd out in this one, and no one can stop me. For the uninitiated, this is a conlang, a constructed language, specifically an artlang, which is a language created for artistic purposes. This conlang is one of many I've made for a fantasy world called Dukratus, but it was my first, so it's... I mean, I worked on this for years. In universe, this language has over a thousand years of history, its own literature, poetry, linguistic debates, sociolects and dialects. This is Meendgar, the H is silent, and we are not going to go into all that in this video. It's like Tolkien's elven languages in Lord of the Rings, made up to exist in-universe, so still supposed to be naturalistic. Naturalistic conlangs are supposed to seem like real languages, with features that could feasibly appear in the natural development of a human language. Whilst the more non-naturalistic a conlang gets, the less emphasis is put on this, until you get languages like Ithquil, which could never, and isn't meant to, have evolved as a human language. It's arguably not even possible to be fluent in it as a human. For the rest of the video, I'll be talking about Meandgar in-universe as much as possible, as if it were a real language, to give an overview. So if you're as big a nerd as me, sit back and enjoy. But first, how about you sit back and enjoy all the non-fiction books you'd ever dreamed of, in record time, with Blinkist? Do you ever want to broaden your horizons and have exciting conversations and all those aha moments, but you just feel like reading all these big books? I don't have time for that. Well, Blinkist lets you understand the most important things from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes each. With a variety of bite-sized content available in written and audio format, you can be educated as well as entertained while you're exercising, making dinner, or whatever. I recently listened to Thinking Fast and Slow, which I won't spoil it, but it's a great insight into how our economy is built upon human psychology. I would really recommend its Blinks, because with Blinkist, I can digest all those ideas quickly and pretend to have read the actual book to my friends who have wanted me to read it. Speaking of friends, the feature Blinkist Spaces allows you to create a space with friends or family where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all titles in the space, with or without a Blinkist Premium subscription. Get a seven day free trial and 25% off Blinkist Annual Premium by using my promo link in the description. Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. Meandgar is the official language of the Great Republic of Meand, a USA-inspired federal republic on the continent of Meand in the center of Dukratos. It is also called the Midlands, but I generally use the Meandgar name now to avoid confusion with the most hated part of England. I'm going to be talking here about classical Meandgar, spoken in the 7 and 800s Second Age. This is a largely constructed language, in universe, I mean, because at the time the GRM was split up between hundreds of different local languages and a common tongue was deemed necessary. Enter Azoro Undu, who created the first version of Meandgar, essentially a heavily simplified version of his own native Mekeyar language. Mekeyar was one of the major languages in the Union, and I've designed this one as well. It has nine cases and five grammatical genders, and it's certainly believable, in the same way, I don't know, Hungarian or Mongolian are believable, but it's very complicated. It was the de facto official language of the country because it was spoken in one of the most powerful states, Mukar, and was the lingua franca of the capital city, uh, Zernokno, where a lingua franca is a language used for communication between people with different native languages. A faction of academics and politicians viewed this highly difficult language as a further barrier to poorer states in the Union and to those without the wealth and or luck to be educated in it. Undu was one of these, which is why he and later his students created Meandgar. It has only four cases, which might seem complicated, but is a massive improvement, remember. It had completely regular derivation systems for adjectives, nouns, and verbs, and it had no grammatical gender. In fact, Meandgar has no gendered vocabulary whatsoever, apart from mother and father. If you want to specify that your sibling is female, you have to say just that, sibling female, volandoia. This is again due to its semi-constructed nature in-universe. Since it was being championed by a band of progressives, such as Undo himself, the language which was actively created to de-emphasize gender roles. The gender system in the Renral Desert has men, Gaia, women, Doya, and a third gender, which historically grew out of a priest class, Teya. For the philosophical fun of it, I decided to go for a confining and highly discriminatory gender trinary instead of binary. Meandgar was successfully introduced in various stages and became the common language of the GRM. Because of the multilinguistic nature of the city of Zernokno, it actually became the language of instruction there, until it completely replaced Mekeya. Because of the influence of the city and the surrounding areas, much of Mukar became Meandgar-speaking, and by the 8th century we have native speakers of the language. 
A lot of Makaya irregularity has at this point been reintroduced into the language because of the close contact between the two, and a lot of new vocabulary has been generated, from derivation and from loanwords, making it look much more like a natural language. It is at this point the language of government at the federal level of the Republic. It continues to develop throughout the next millennium, becoming more naturalistic as it moves away from its constructed roots, going through several sound shifts and changes in morphology, one of its cases disappears, but this version here in the 8th and 9th centuries is what I want to focus on, because it's the most fleshed out form of the language. Meandgar's phonology is relatively simple, as Under defined the phonemes very loosely and used few of them, at least compared to Makaya, to allow for variation for the different first language speakers in the GRM. The Mukarian standard, which is what we're considering in this video here, has 15 consonants. This velar fricative here only occurs at the beginning of words, and z and l become devoiced, s and l, when in a cluster with voiceless plosives. It has seven or eight vowels depending on sociolect. The close vowels e and u are pronounced a little longer than other other vowels. The vowel air er is the only vowel with a long and short version, from where ear has become long air. Er. Mianga also has phonemic stress, with the emphasis usually falling on the first syllable of a word but being shifted with the addition of a chakka on the vowel of a subsequent syllable. This looks like a simple underlining, put this chakka on the first vowel of a word and you get that velar fricative from earlier. Talking of the orthography, this is the Elam Grek alphabet used to write Meandgar. Originally it was written top to bottom or left to right, but the left to right version became more prominent due to the influence of the left to right archipelagon script. Some other letters aren't always included in the alphabet but are still used in the scripture. Then there's the system of Riyag, shortened script, where pronouns, grammatical particles and other commonly used words and morphemes have their own logographic characters, usually descended from the corresponding character in Makaya. Grammatically, Mangar is, again, fairly simple, but it's still, you know, a language. Verbs are conjugated in four forms from the stem, two of these are imperatives, with the regular imperative adding a to the stem, as in tenepa, do, and the imperative ending enne, as in tenepene, please do. The other conjugations are the forwards and backwards forms, as Mayandian linguists call them in world, which relate to the order of the agent and patient of the sentence. The word order is completely free, but if the agent appears in the sentence before the patient does, the forwards form is employed, ending in tu, like in the sentence Tjaka kontanjewat, they like the town. If the agent appears after the patient, the backwards form is used, with a rar ending in writing, which is generally shortened to ra in speech, like in njewat tjaka kumra, which could be translated as the town is liked by them, but it's perhaps more accurately the town is what they like, or you know that town? They like it. Meandgar may have free word order, but it prefers topic prominent clauses, which means sentences and clauses tend to start with a thing or information which is being talked about, followed by a comment on that thing. You can also see some other word order preferences in these sentences, such as the fact that pronouns tend to go before the verb. For negative, the prefix r is added to the front of the verb. There's also no prepositions in Meandgar, you just have words like dam instead, which is the verb to be under. Nouns have four or five forms, depending on who's counting. We can take the base form of a noun, like get, stone, or stones, or a stone, or the stone, you get the idea, there's no articles of definiteness or number declension, and dalchet, person. So there's the genitive, with ending iya for nouns, or just a t for pronouns, which shows that something possesses something else, like in get dalchetia, the stone of the person, or the person's stone. Again, the word order is free here, so you can say dalchetia, get, if the person is the topic of the clause. Then there's the secondary genitive, with ending itia for nouns, or tia for pronouns, and this is the genitive of a genitive, like in get bolania wetia, my sibling's stone, whereas get bolania wet would be the sibling's and my stone. By the way, in theory, the genitive of a genitive of a genitive would loop back round to the primary genitive, and so on. Then there's the subordinate form, which is formed by adding the last vowel of the noun onto the end, so get becomes gette, eik becomes eika, or by adding N plus the last vowel onto a pronoun, so where becomes where This is triggered by certain verbs, conjunctions, and is used to avoid super complex nouns. It essentially makes words get grouped together into a single argument within the sentence, and it even allows certain subordinate clauses to be split. That person there, I think they're nice. Finally, there's a compound form which is used to string nouns together German style, like get becoming getas to make words like getaspial, stone tool.
Adjectives are declined according to the noun they refer to with these endings. They can also be turned into adverbs by adding r. Then there's four types of conjunctions, and there's also verbs which take what would correspond to indirect objects. These are added in their compound form to the front of the verb. There are affixes which specify the intensity of a verb or amount of a noun. There's temporal particles to show when an action takes place, like lak to show an action is finished, peak to show an action hasn't started yet, khwer where an action is ongoing. And then there's the weird particle le that I don't even know how to define and which we're not going into in this video. So if you want to know about that, uh, like and comment and subscribe or something, I don't know.